All right, good evening everyone and welcome to May 20th, 2019 Park and Rec Advisory Committee meeting. We do have a quorum and not only a quorum, but we have a full quorum, which I really appreciate that. I'll call this meeting to order. I need to get an approval for the minutes from the last meeting. I make a motion that we accept the uh, minutes as written. I second the motion. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 All right, we're going to talk a little bit about old business, but before we do that, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, for those of you, who, I know everybody knows Mr. David McGowan. David will be filling in for uh, AC. AC is off uh, at the moment. I'm not sure how long that'll be, but uh, David's grabbed as my favorite expression. He's grabbed this bull by the horn and he's run with it. He stepped in and uh, with uh, people coming at him in about 20 different directions. And with the help of Felicia, they've been trying to catch him up to snuff. But again, we'll start with old business and I'm gonna let Felicia talk about that. Well, good evening. Um, okay, so our old business is the opening day we had scheduled for April 23rd at 6 p.m. Um, we would just like to thank the board members and everyone that came out to support the league. Uh, during that day, we did have um, about half of our board represented that day, so it was really, um, it was very supportive, so I wanted to thank you guys for that. Um, on the Senior Center yard sale, um, obviously this isn't the uh, Senior Advisory Committee meeting, but uh, being that we do work hand in hand with them on essentially all of the events that they do there. Uh, we do like to show our support and they did an amazing job. Um, they raised over $5,000 from the yard sale with the, uh, with the donations and the auction items. Okay, that's good. Yes. That's great, that's really good. So we were very excited about that. Felicia and Kathy was out there pretty much all day with park uh, personnel. David and even his wife came by, I think, uh, his wife even spent a little money out there. I, I don't know for that for sure. There's but money everywhere she goes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll move on to new business. And again, uh, I'll let one of you guys talk about what's coming up. Um, senior prom should be next Friday, the multi-purpose building. Um, Parks and Rec's gonna help decorate that. I think it's from four to seven, is that correct? 7.30. 4 to 7 30 um 70s kind of theme so uh we'd like to have y'all to come out and make it we'd be glad to have you we have a lot of support from the bridge um at this event they have uh graciously donated um some decorations as well as, as food so we've been working we've been trying to do a lot of community outreach just all over the place and they have been um They've been more than willing. They, they come to each of our senior advisory committee meetings and they step in to do that. So they're also um, a small part in this and are very excited for this coming up. So, And we're going to have a great DJ there. Can yes. I ask a silly question. This is with graduation and everything going on. This is for the seniors, uh, our old folks like me. This isn't for seniors in high school, right? No, no. That's no. correct. Okay. Our senior center prom. I just wanted to prom. clarify in case there were any other blondes out there. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. So yes, our senior center. Um but yes, uh, Alderman No has graciously accepted the um the MC job and DJ there. So uh along with Kathy and I's help, we are going to provide the music. Okay, this next one, I want to give a little shout out here to uh Kathy Tyson and uh Deborah Bothrop along with myself as a just a listening tool we had a meeting with uh, Montique and Grants and uh, Kathy and Deborah between the two of them are, are extremely savvy about these grants so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, with your all's help and Montique's and that we can start getting some uh, grants in here the dog park grant uh, I'm not sure who even wants to talk about this. Well, we're going to move forward with it. Um, we've got the blessing of the mayor 
So everything has to be submitted by the end of this month. You guys have a basic rundown of the qualifications in your packet. Um, we'll put our name in the hat and see what comes out. Um, free money, 100% grant, $25,000 minimum, up to 100000 max for one applicant. Um, so we're going to throw Laverne in there and see what comes, comes about it. People have been asking for a dog park, so we feel like as a park and rec department then it's our it's our time to start stepping forward so yeah. they're giving this grant out to 25 different communities across tennessee do you know where you're talking about locating it if laverne gets it they don't specifically have a location now um i know that the mayor said if we get it he will find a place for it i think there's some land sporadically throughout the city um, there may be some over off the Taylor Drive um, area somewhere. There may be some um, down the road from the senior center. You know, I think there's three acres from the senior center to the roundabout. And there may be some other scattered throughout. So it's kind of, at this point, we really don't have to have a location pinpointed to apply. And even if we get accepted, that's when we can start moving forward with our location and our and our planning. Didn't the city just buy some land on Stones River? That'd be perfect for it, right there by the lake and the core property. Uh, I don't know if they have bought it yet. No, we haven't bought that yet. It comes up next reading. Mm -hmm. That'd uh, be perfect in a residential area. Yeah, we're really excited. Um, I'll give some shout outs to David here because he won't do it, but um, he did. Um, he did go around and, you know, educated himself on the different dog parks, being that if you, you know, if you don't have dogs and I'm don't sorry, go out. I'm sorry, who did? David. Oh, okay. Um, went out and just took a look at the different ones in our areas, and um, I have frequented dog parks um, for years now with my, uh, with my puppies, so people in this area, I think, would really benefit from it. They would love it. Um, and we're definitely excited to do it. So um, <coughs> I think pushing forward with this would be a great, you know, great asset to our community. I saw uh, something on the news uh, maybe a couple of months ago about one in Nashville that's getting ready to open up that actually has a small fee, and that's to register your dog to go to the park. Uh, that's a fee to keep up the records of the shots and vet records and stuff like that, keep those up to date. And I guess they would just get a card. They pay a small fee after their dog has been certified safe. And they would just show their card and go there. Did you look at that one? Did you? Well, I, the two that I toured didn't have an attendant there. They just had the rules posted. And both sets of rules basically said that the animal had to have a current rabies tag or, you know, you could be evicted from the dog park. But neither... Neither park I, that I toured, one in Murfreesboro and one in Smyrna, had an attendant on site. Did you see the one at uh, Fairgrounds? No, sir. They got a really nice one there. Really nice. That I, might, I think what something are the... like that, we, it would kind of be hard to staff because it's, you know, <clears> even, <throat> most of them shut down at dark, so most of them aren't lighted. Um, and I, I just think something like that would be hard it's Hard probably the, I think it's maybe the message they're trying to get to people who are dog owners that you really need to make sure your dog has a rabies shot. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also, and I know y'all know this, if you frequent dog parks, make sure you have a water station mm -hmm. written into that application. Uh, the one I really, the, the one our neighbors next door is pretty impressive because they have quite a bit of shade. Yeah. The one in Murfreesboro, the one I went to in Murfreesboro, not so much of shade. So mm -hmm. I think any location we pick in the future if it's wooded, we kind of pick and choose what stays and what doesn't. Um, that way we can put benches in, watering stations, and give you shade also. Is there parts of our park up here at Veterans Memorial Park up near the trails? I know there's a lot of trees up that way. Is there a part of that that's big enough to have a dog park? It probably is. A, uh, I know the front, the very front area where, that we use for overflow parking for Old Timers Festival, at one time, there was plans to put a baseball field up there. So I think they're kind of holding off on that because in case they ever decide to move one of these fields back here, if it's tied up to a grant, we have to have some place re to relocate that. I think what they would prefer is to not, if we ever bring in any future kind of athletics, kind of keep them centrally located in the park 
So if we have a dog park, maybe keep it off site. So we kind of keep the dog park separate from your main park. Well, you get real athletic if your dog gets loose. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so does this. I know that. David, does this grant, uh, do we have to have a specific place to put on the, the paper for the grant, or can we just get the grant, hold it? What I think in what, uh, what Monteca grant writer has in here is a sample letter from the mayor stating that if it's approved, that he will find the land for it. Um, so at this point, we definitely don't have to pinpoint a place to put it, which is a benefit to us because most of the times in these grants, you know, you pretty much got to have your, your homework done ahead of time. This one, we can almost do our home, apply for it and then do our homework afterwards. Yeah, I've learned a little bit about that from these two. Are you thinking of a, a fenced in area? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, and most of them have two fenced in areas, one for your smaller dogs and one for your bigger dogs. Good. Um, the two I toured, like one in Murfreesboro, I think it may have had 11 to 13 parking spots. Every one of them was full. The one in Smyrna had mid 20s and the time of day we went, nobody was there. So I think it's hit or miss, you know. I think you can, you can get anywhere, one acre is the minimum. I think five may be the max. So you can fall anywhere in that range. Quick question. Um, I see where there's a dog park dash grant committee. Like who makes up that committee? You know what? I don't know if we have gotten that far in it. That's yet. their committee, the grant people that give the grant. Yeah, that would probably be. Well, actually, okay then. So I see the, that's the, the who's going to be part, who's making up like writing the executive summary then? Uh, that would be. The uh, grant writer, she would write up the proposal and she would get, uh, take care of getting all the paperwork needed from that. And then she would also get the letter from the mayor and the board that's required. Anything she needs from us, um, she knows we're more than willing to help out. Uh, but at this point, I think it's just getting all your paperwork documented and submitted. Since we don't really have to have the spot located right now is a big plus for us. Awesome. I think somewhere in Laverne, we can earmark a minimum acres worth of land. Awesome. And my my last question then is, who where's the who's the owner of it? Like who's going to own that piece of it? Like making sure working with the grant writer. Like where does the ball sit right now? Who's going to own the piece of the? Uh, as far as like who's going to who's going to make sure we keep moving forward in the process? Like that would be us as a parks and rec department. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that would be that would be my job. Uh, that pro that responsibility would fall on me until until further notice. Perfect. So, so we can look for we'll next not meeting for all through the cracks. Yep. Great to hear. It's an awesome idea. All right. I do have some questions on this. Although it's a hundred percent grant uh, guaranteed up to twenty five thousand, do you have a projected estimate estimate of cost of this project? And has it been put in the budget? It has not been put in the budget. We don't have an estimated cost yet because we don't really know where it's going to go. If it's a piece of property that the city already owns that we could go in there and pick and choose what we're going to clear cut and not would be beneficial to us because we can pick and choose. The only cost associated with that would be um, the cost of clearing the land. So if we were to get this and we already had an acre, three acres earmarked, we could fence three acres of land for under $25,000. Mm -hmm. I think your big cost anything like this is going to be your water stations mm -hmm. getting water there um some of them even had have electric so we're probably going to have want to have water and electric there just for a security light at night um your fencing i don't i don't really anticipate your fencing to be the bulk of this unless you're fencing a bigger area than three acres um, and that would also depend on what type of fence we decided to go with uh, black chain link is always nice. Um, Smyrna has base, like a primitive type farm fence almost. Um, I have been out to the uh, one in Smyrna and uh, that's connected to a park, correct? I, the one concern I had about that um, when I've been out to Sharp Springs Park is I've seen a lot of dogs running loose out in the park. Um, that's just one concern, which leads me to the next question is what about liability it, um, factors for the city? Well, and I think that would have to be stated on the rules when you enter the dog park. Mm -hmm. um, of course,
course, the city's going to always assume some type of reliability, but that, that's almost with anything else that we put on or, or provide to the public that a lot of times that's almost at your own risk. That's where, like, the, the rabies tag has to come in because if your dog doesn't have that tag and it bites somebody, it'd be difficult to hold the city liable for something that you should have already taken care of. Yeah, owners should bear the responsibility of making sure their dogs are uh, vaccinated and tagged and the one and under their control the one we tour toured in Murfreesboro backs up to the walking trail yeah. I don't know if it's part of the greenway but it is actually a walking trail so there's open green space between both of them uh, of course the one that's Murr is bigger um, the green space is, is a, a whole lot more abundant than the one in Murfreesboro do they have seating areas they had a couple <laughs> of benches uh, <coughs> nothing too extravagant no sh there may have been one shelter small just wooden covered I can't remember but most of them just had benches under a shade tree no wine bars or coffee bars <laughs> yeah okay we may look at that that I was know, one I in Kathy Nashville always wanted a beer garden we may look at that <laughs> there was one in I think the one in Nashville was going to have all that and I guess that's serving the upper well crust of Nashville I know it's been talked about for years we'd like to see it we'd like to see some progression um, that's what I was fixed to say Dave I, I've uh, I don't know much about them other than what I've seen and read, but uh, it seems like a pretty good thing. But I know a lot of people have asked about them. It looks like this is at least a stepping stone towards that direction. Then it would be up to the powers that be to take care of. of uh, I do have one last question, though, and this is about in the um, – from what I understand, the insurance for the city is like under, uh, Kathy, I can't think what it's called right now, the insurance coverage? For the city. Okay. So um, I do know that for some homeowners that you cannot have, they will not insure you if you have certain breeds of dogs. So have you looked into any of this information? That, that is just something for you to look into. Yeah, we have not looked into you. that. Our main focus right now was trying to beat the May 30th <clears throat> deadline. Um, and then we could we could work those particulars out. We just, just definitely didn't to... want this to fall through the cracks. But that's a valid point mm -hmm. because that's not. I, I know I would have to go back and look at my notes and the pictures that I took to see if it limited the breeds of dogs that could come in. There are um, breed restrictions at some parts. Okay. It's um. Okay. Well, and I know that I just did all the paperwork for the city I work in now for the um, liability and workers' compensation insurance, and what I found, and I, I hope that Cheryl could confirm this, the the HR person that also deals with insurance, we just have a big checklist. You have this, mm -hmm. this, this, and they'll figure out what your annual insurance is from that. It, it, it's not something that's really hard to add. Okay. I know that this city, for some reason, has a whole lot of the dogs that are on the restricted breed list that most insurance, homeowners insurance, mm -hmm. have. I'm not sure why we have so many concentrated in this area, but we do. So that's a, something that probably would need to be looked into. We don't even, in Wartrace, they had looked at a long time ago adding um, a restriction against people having pit bulls in that town. And I'm not saying anything against or for any kind of dog breed at all, but they had found when they did probably a year's worth of leg work, mm -hmm. their attorney came back and said, we can't restrict, you can't prevent that type of dog from being in this town. Hmm. I, I didn't. I think there has to be some sort of ownership. Exactly. You're, as you know, a property responsibility owner. And, yeah. You know, if, I mean, that's, that's that. But I, I like the idea that we're at least getting. I love the idea of a dog park. Of getting a stepping stone and uh sounds like david and felicia has got this uh under control and we'll i guess we'll sit back in our next meeting and they'll tell us all about it <clears throat> all right felicia you want to tell us about movie in the park yes um due to uh license restrictions we actually can't announce it on in a tv setting what it would be um so uh, you mean the name of the movie? Correct. Because I thought, well, it's right here in front of me, and I can't talk about it? <laughs> no, but if you do go to our Facebook event that we have created, which I hope all of you all have liked and shared, um, <clears throat> that uh, we do have some hints in there. So if you you know want to jump on the, on the bandwagon and guess what it might be, 
Um, there's oh. that, but we are pretty excited That's about it. That's a cute it. idea. Have a contest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's on there. Um, so we do have the concession <laughs> set up for that. Um, we are setting it up <laughs> as a drive-in setting as well as um, you can come onto the field and watch it. So either way, we'll have speakers set for both, uh, both options, whoever wants to... Um, do that and it will be june 28th so we're pretty excited about it is it scary what <laughs> what day is that on the friday night <laughs> you. for family movie Shh, can't talk about it <laughs> it's a friday night mom's <clears throat> the word <laughs> so you you all been doing that on your facebook laverne page we have yeah so um of we, course any of our events that we do have coming up uh, we try to create at <clears throat> least at a minimum a month in advance, if not more, um, for the events that we have. So just keep an eye on those. Uh, Parks and Rec will put them out as well as City Hall. Um, and then we'll continue to share those and put those on the pages. So if you see those. When will you be able to tell the movie? Well, it, it can't be advertised according to licensing restrictions. So. Did but you say it, just in a TV setting? Can you not put it on a poster? We can or? put it on, yeah, we can put it on a poster and we can put it in an email. So. Yeah, the permit restricts the 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 name. The name of the movie? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> I don't know either, but <laughs> you know, for people who can't hear Jerry, he said they've been advertising it on Channel yeah, 3. Yeah, for you folks well, that okay. the we'll, permit. We'll check it in to make sure. Um, but I had, we had looked it over and sent it, so that was the restrictions they had come with. So. Yeah, now you got my curiosity up. I have to look it up. But if you go to our Facebook event and like it and get interested in it, then we can that, see what it is. Let you. That's, mm -hmm. and that's there again, that falls under that, man. There's just so many rules and regulations in government that uh, Lord knows I get myself well, in, in the trouble. That's in the entertainment field. Yeah. So. All right, this next one, powder puff flag football. I want to get this fired up. I've been waiting on Felicia to give me a date so I can start talking about it. Uh, Help me with this word, Kathy, the camaraderie. Did I get it right? Good job. Uh, of the citizens because there's such a <clears throat> uh, split and we want to we want to keep trying to do things like this. The, the movie uh, in the park and powder puff flag football. I want to try to get as many women involved as I can. I think it will be fun. I think it will be funny. I think that uh, I, I've, I've been involved in these before uh, and it's really a good time. We just got to get that date so we can start working on it. Then I'll get a surprise for the uh, participation and a price for uh, admission. I think there's not a child or, or, or even a husband or boyfriend in the world that wouldn't love to see his wife out there uh, getting slapped around a little bit. <laughs> Uh, Do they have different age groups for the ladies? No, it's going to be all girls. Can, can well, you move it girls, indoors like into the air conditioning, maybe? <laughs> well, what my realistically, what I'd like to do is get a bunch of bunch of females because uh -huh. uh, that way everybody can take breaks, more breaks. I'll do the 60 and up bunch. I don't know what the proper vernacular is. Females, women, gals, girls, whatever. Ladies. Ladies, yeah. Ladies out there with flags on and uh, beating each other up. I'll be, gl I'll be glad to help you at the web page and whatever, but I'm not going to what, what <laughs> I'd kind of What I'd kind of thought about doing was if I can get enough ladies to do this is we may implement the first quarter, 21 to 30, second quarter, so on and so forth, or something to that effect. That'd be cute, too. Yeah. Now, I don't know how that'll work. Lord, I've even got some of the seniors down there wanting to play. Okay. So um, to give you the date, um, I know we talked a little bit about late June. However, um, with the events that we have going on in tournaments, I think it would be a little hard to pull off. But if we are looking at a potential of um, a July 13th or July 20th as an option. So how do you feel about those two dates? July 13th and the, or the 20th. Mm -hmm. oh, those are two Saturdays, I'm assuming. Yes. That's so hot. 
Oh, it's going to be miserable hot. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's I mean, what makes it. I remember last Fourth of July, you couldn't walk from me to you without stopping to catch your breath. Yeah, it's, that's and what. will the men be sitting in shade and drinking mint juleps? That's right. No, I yeah. think men in dresses. I thought about trying to get some of the guys to. Men in dresses uh, will play the play the third quarter. <laughs> try to get them to be uh, cheerleaders. <laughs> well, that's good. We, I'll look at those dates, Felicia, and then I'll email you and. Okay. If we can come up with something, I will start, uh, you know, but I know that you've got, I'm sure one of your daughters would probably want to play, you know? I would, I would pay $10 to $20 admission if men in dresses would go and play. Uh -huh. I, I second that. And call that your powder puff game. If we could get a Mini dresses. I don't care if it's a maxi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's a pantsuit. <laughs> Since how I don't know what that is, I'll pass. Kilts. All right, this kilts, yeah. this next one, I guess we'll let uh, whoever wants to talk about it. Uh, this Kathy, is exciting. Kathy yeah. put us a Good job, Kathy. brochure thing out here. Uh, I, again, I, I don't know a lot about this. I think that the initial thing about it was pretty exciting because this zombie thing seems to be the new craze so uh if you guys can for november the 8th that ought to be a good cool night and everybody can dress up in their stuff i guess so whoever november wants to, 8th whoever wants to take that over <laughs> this is fabulous um okay so as you can see there in your pockets um or you can follow along with the presentation that we have up here um being that this was an idea that was presented to us and we really wanted to move forward with it, um, we got some ideas together and um, kind of put this in a presentation so you could see where our thoughts were on how we moved, how we want to move forward with it. Um, so obviously we wouldn't have a set amount on a line item budget for it, but it is a program that we would like to introduce. So to start off, um, we would do little footprints or lighted pathways around the park um, in the the walking trail in the park um, signs here there's some effects that we would bring in um, to take the zombies around so um, burn barrels the smoke sh smoke machines dry ice things like that so these were just kind of ideas that we were coming up with to kind of visual help visualize it for um, for the committee members so we were excited about that um, <laughs> You all could dress as volunteers here and greet our guests that would want to walk around um, our park with us. I thought that was um, definitely a welcoming sight for our zombie fans. Um, Kathy found some finger foods for us, so those were pretty delicious. If we wanted to end the walk in kind of like a um, buffet style or snack style table where we could uh, congregate and, you know, just talk about this pop culture, you know, and there's... You could get into a discussion with a lot of people about The Walking Dead or any, any anything related to zombies. <laughs> so um, some ideas on that, which you guys also can give us thoughts on how to make this or improve it a little better. But this, we just wanted to make sure you guys had a visual visualization of what we were wanting to do. Where did they get the fingers for the finger food? The finger foods? Oh, that can be that that can be made out of numerous things. I mean, you can use you know cheese sticks or pretzels. Don't or look at me. I know nothing about this. <laughs> Just look at pictures from Gross Grub and you've got lots of ideas. I can tell you yeah. that the mayor will definitely be for this. Oh, I, yeah. He and is and a, we expect him to be right out there leading that zombie pack. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Mary fish? Jane. I'm sorry. Would there be a charge admission? Um, we could do a small admission for it. That way it would cover some of the costs of maybe the purchase of our snacks or um, you know, some of the small decorations we attempted, what we, what we have in this presentation is more budget friendly. Okay. No. Yeah. So, um, we, we attempted to do a budget friendly start, just kind of a soft push on this to see how much interest we could get. Because if we do get a lot of signups, we could, I mean, we could blow this out of the water. Make it a so festival every year. That's what I'm thinking. Exactly. You get vendors to come. Oh, I, know, I know a couple of directors that would come. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Has anybody checked, actually, and I'd asked Kathy this earlier, but has anybody actually uh, been to one of these, seen one of these, participated in one of these? 
they have them in Nashville. In Nashville. Well, I know they have them, but I'm just wondering, has anybody else? I went in Smyrna when they filmed a movie. Um, they, they asked for 500 zombies to come to do some filming, and I went to that. It was a lot of fun, and I bet they probably had 1,000 people show up. So you'll dress up like this, but you won't play flag football. That is correct, sir. <laughs> but this I is November 8th compared to June or July. Let me just point that out. It's a lot cooler. It's a lot cooler, and old women don't like it really hot. Especially when we get my age. My age. Ladies. <laughs> now, see, I had to say ladies. You said women. We can say women. We you have to say, say ladies. Oh. You can say Go women. ahead on. You so there would be a... Anyway, yes. <laughs> Get me out of here, Eric. No, hey. no worries. I don't have a problem with it. You can call us. Any girls. comment, Eric. Any comment. <laughs> Chicks. Um, so we would have a costume contest, naturally, to see what, you know, your best zombie would be there. Um, at the end of this zombie walk, we visualize it going around the upper part of our trail, coming around. It's, you know, it, it's it's not a run. It's not, you know, you're, you're out there, you're pretending to be dead. It, you know, it'll take some time to go around there. Exactly. Um, the whispers can walk a little bit faster than the regular zombies. What is that? The whispers? <laughs> Good point. Yes, yes. The I've difference between, right, the, the, difference between the two. Um, but possibly doing um, a small screening of a movie, not necessarily for anyone to sit down and watch. We wouldn't, if you want to stay, but just to have that background ambiance of, you know, a scary movie or um, possibly music playing, things like that. Just uh, so as we come together towards the end of it that we could, you know, have the snacks and just talk about it and, like I said, just congregate and be a community there. Um, we picked an area at the back in front of Pavilion B in that parking lot uh, so we could utilize the pavilion for the media source, whether it be music or movie, and then line out the parking lot for the area for everyone to gather. So regardless of how big or small it was, we could accommodate it. Miss Mary Jane, what did you say? Well, I was going to say, if it, um, would it be just the one time, just that day? Just that, that, just that night. That time, mm -hmm. that time. Yeah, it would just be a Friday night. Okay. Um, we also did that um, in lieu of football as well, because Saturdays and Sundays, um, they're on our fields, and, you know, uh, we want to give them the opportunity right. to play and yeah. not, so we would have that, that, that timing is another reason why we picked it. If you take a look here, we do have our map um, of what we were visualizing, where the walk would start, where it would come through. If you take a look at the blue area in the middle, we wanted to make it both kid-friendly as well as have a potential to be scarier for our more adult zombies. So the area mapped out in the red is going to be the general zombie walk. If you wanted to go down the scary lane, um, you know, like I said, for the more adult, then we would have a path through the middle where it'd be a little creepier, if you would. Do kids do that show? Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's kids so. that have taken But, you know, if you wanted to bring your kids out and dress them up and you didn't want them to what see someone Carl? with ghoul coming out of their mouth Carl. or, Carl. you know, foam Carl. or something like that, then. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do it for real, real young, but that's just as a What's parent that? and grandparent. I'd, I'd say real, real young probably don't, but. When right, you get the right. teenage crowd. But you know what I mean. If you, so. you know, if you, if you brought your family out and they enjoyed, I don't know, Twilight or something. I don't know. Zombies or, or just vampires. I don't Is your know. kids Anyways. watch it, Eric? <laughs> no. Uh, so we don't watch The Walking Dead. But there are zombie cartoons. Yeah. So Really? Which mm -hmm. leads me to the question of, like, what does the kid-friendly path look like? Have, has that been vetted? Like, kind of brainstormed some ideas? Well, yeah. I mean, you're more, you know, PG-13, gross, uh, you know, yeah, so drooling type decorations would be on the scary path you know the yeah. one on the outside would be what you'd see at a, a halloween house of so some creepy bone sticking out of the ground or you know yeah. a, a graveyard okay. or something like that so it would be a kid-friendly version of something scary but if you wanted to walk through the middle where it got a little bit more detailed then that's where we could go and what's the target audience like what's the if you have anybody to that that, age, that has a love for zombies Gotcha. I'm like everyone, and I thought I'd never watch that show. From my from I, my I four year old who loves creepy things in hey. his in his uh, words to you know, know anybody. You know this this sounds to me like kind of a when you was a kid they gave you a nickname. It sounds like something that really catch on because uh, I'd support you guys a hundred percent. I'll even play the dude that totes that bat with the. 
Bob Warren. You couldn't. Awesome. Yeah, you, I've got the perfect He's on the blue line. <laughs> He's in the blue line, yeah. <laughs> That's scared me. Um, so we did include event ideas here. If you guys had a couple of them that you, you know, jotted down or wanted to discuss, we would love that just because we have a general idea of where we want to go. Um, but, you know, this was y'all's yeah. brainchild, so we, we want to see it. I think as a chairman uh, of this board, my first thought would be to try to uh, get something back to the city for the cost. That would be my main. Mm -hmm. For the admission. For, the, for my main thing. And then all the other stuff, it sounds like everybody else has, uh, has got great ideas but that would be something i'm sure that uh, they would that would be that would lead more to my budget estimate at the very back of the page um if you guys we wanted to try to get a number because i know that's important you know to everyone you know what we're spending the money on so if we were to kind of get an idea and gather this this would be something i would ask to you guys to hold on to and bring into the next meeting and that way seeing something um that you could potentially offer us as far as the props and you know maybe we didn't think about it uh kathy and i had some ideas of bringing some old pallets in and you know weaving some gross stuff through that you know that would be free um we have those stacked up at the shop things like that so any ideas or budgets that you could bring for our next meeting would be greatly appreciated so that's what those two are for we don't have to discuss them now i love that you all did this i love it so much thank, thank you, you. We've been wanting this for a long yes. time. We've been wanting to do something with this board and you guys for a long time, but it has never been allowed. And now that we have Steve, it's like he's pushing all the ideas of the board. When finally. you say Steve, do you mean Negan? I don't think. Yeah, he that's that dude's <laughs> name, Negan. I don't think yeah. he would be Negan. What's, his, what's that man's Negan. name, Rosie? What's that guy that runs around with Alpha? That does what she says. Oh, What's his name? Beta. No, Omega. Beta, Omega. Omega or Beta. Or She's something. the beginning. He's the end. He's Omega. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I'll tell you somebody that could really help you on this stuff because she's really, really weird. Anybody walk, walk, watching at home uh, don't think I'm calling her out, but mm -hmm. Diana McCormick. Oh, yeah. Uh, she'd be really good. <laughs> man. Well, I, I mean, I think that you need to get Mayor Halloween Cole involved, too. Yeah, so. Mayor Cole is all oh, yeah. about These it. Are, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I have yeah. spoke to him a little bit about it. So yeah, um, Diana would be great to get involved in. Well, I, I th I'm excited about what you, everybody comes up with. I mean, yeah. like I said. I look forward to seeing those at the next one. So if y'all could please help us out with that. Yeah, and actually, I know that uh, that was something years ago that we had talked about on the Parks and Rec back when uh, Mayor Cole was on that board. So I'm sure he will be very excited about. Well, he's, he you know. he watches that show. That's what he was last year when we went to uh, Diana McCormick's uh, uh, her annual Halloween her event. Halloween party. He was that's what he came as was a zombie, and I think uh, a large part of Laverne has that in common about loving the. Walking Dead shows. There again, it's another one of those camaraderies. Common denominator. Things that I'd like to see the community, you know, put things aside. It's brilliant. All right, moving on to landscaping. David? Um, we should put this PowerPoint together also. Oh, okay. I know through the years when the design of the wall was first um, sketched out it did have some additional landscaping in it I think at one time it may have had some we even proposed um, planting some trees up there okay. I don't really know how feasible the trees idea is going to be because of all the rock surface up there and we actually built uh, the walking pad up to it they actually had to bring a bunch of rock in to build that up so you've probably got a foot or more of just plain rock that you're not going to get through. It's difficult when we have um, Veterans Day up there to even drive a piece of rebar in the ground to set our flags in. We kind of proposed um, maybe making a planter off the front of the wall and that's something that we can maintain and we know once the plants or the shrubs get watered in then they're pretty much um, self-sustainable. Um, I think it would take um, I, I think that we'd like to try this first because I think it maybe kills two birds with one stone. You, you, do get, you do get the beautification of what we've been going for from 
from the inception of this wall, but then you don't have to deal with um, how are we going to get through the hard ground surface. Because this is actually going to be built up, so anything we bring into this planter is going to be um, dirt brought into that. So we're not going to be using existing soil that we elevated off the front of the wall. How many? About the, the, where the plaques are around No, the that's on the, very, on the very front of the wall, the Veterans okay. Memorial Wall. We'll pull off of yeah, that at the great. bottom. Is there enough room? I'm trying to, you've got a picture in here of the wall, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. and so I at the say, bottom, are you talking about the front side of the wall yes, where the plaques are not, the names aren't on? No, yes, the, the front side that says Veterans Memorial Park and not the back side where the... Okay, because I'd be worried about covering up some of the name plates. Yeah. Even we wouldn't be able to do anything on that side. Um, actually, we can do something on that side, just not the um, planters. This would be like a, we've got, we've still got some <coughs> of this brick available, so we may be able to, co to could even match that brick. If not, we may want to go with something like a flagstone type planter, um, as long as it was elevated, because that ground starts to slope down when you come off the front of that brick wall. That ground does start to take a severe slope, so anything we do would have to come off I don't know, three foot maybe. That will give you room for any shrubs we plant in there. <coughs> we want to keep those trimmed back so they just don't get overgrown. And we could go back. If you plant those shrubs, they've got some ornamental stuff in between those. Um, we could even go back with like a monkey grass in between the shrubs. Kind what of about daylilies? Me and Kathy were discussing how durable daylilies are and how We do have, have those in the, in the presentation. Yeah, so you're talking about possible. making it uh, when you turn into the park, you see in the back side of it. Yeah, as you're seeing the very front of the yeah. wall as you turn in, that would be almost like a raised planter coming off of that. And that's rock there? Mm -hmm. It's rock all through really? there. Really? It's yeah, that, County. That pad is what? probably, I want to say that pad is 12 inches deep, um, <clears throat> the memorial wall pad itself. And then they had to make the elevation for the walkway match that. So it was pretty much a flat surface at one time until they started bringing in shot rock to build that up. David, what do you think about um, where the benches are? Would it be possible if not at the same time you do this, but later on to do like the box planters that are, you know, just the square planters? Well, we have, if you turn to the third page, I think mm -hmm. in your brochure, if, if any of you guys were there at the, uh, the first time, the, the first event we held at the wall, we actually had these planters put out. There's five of them. We still have those. Where'd they go? Um, they're, at, they're still at the shop, so it was decided not to keep them out year round, but we do have those. So if we can try that to start with. The issue we're going to have with uh, the bigger planters close to the benches is when this was first designed, it was also designed to hold four benches. Um, what we got into when we started placing the flagpoles and the monument, uh, the monument and the benches is we've got to have that uh, ADA compliance. So you've got to have a five foot radius, clear radius for, for a turning of a wheelchair. So that kind of restricted us a little bit. That's why we kind of changed our plan as we were going. So we went from four benches to two. What about like in this picture right up here that you have on the board? Um, you can see is that the is that Captain Coos's bench? Yes, that's the first bench. That's that's the bench you guys collected money for as you first go what, in. What about even behind that? Um, could could there not be like an ornamental tree, like a Japanese maple or well, something? That is actually where they brought all that rock in. Oh, uh, you'd have to build area. that up pretty. Yeah, anytime from where where it starts to slope off, if you were actually up there looking at it now, the picture you're seeing further where it runs out to the right of the screen, that starts to slope back into a valley almost going towards the basketball court. So it's tough. I'm jump in one second. This front picture here, you only have about a foot and a half before it immediately drops. Okay. It, it drops down. So it's definitely, it's very raised where he's talking about. So. And then those planters, I think we can try that, you know, those we can rotate those flowers out with the season um, day lilies you don't have to rotate in the winter uh, they um, you can just cut them down and if you had something else that's uh, winter hardy like a juga mm -hmm. or <coughs> vinca minor or something that could stay green in that area 
So we have these which have um, shallow roots um, for some of the evergreens, if you will, something that'll stay green throughout the year. Um, and then there was an option to do each of these. We're in a 7A zone for the um, for what type of plants would thrive and, and um, the hardiness of what we can withstand. All these fall into that zone. And um, as you can see, daylilies are on there. Uh, they're definitely a beautiful flower that adds a lot of color, um, adds a lot of um, just beautification, which is what we're trying to do, the green and the pretty and so stuff like that. So being able to put the, the shrubs and the flowers there together and then utilize some of those flowers as well for the planters is what we were hoping to do. Um, with the, what we've chosen here. So those were just some options um, that we came up with that we hope maybe if y'all, like I said, this is another one of those things where if you take a look at it and maybe give us your feedback on that on what you'd like. Um, what kind of time frame are you talking about as far as trying to get this done? Um, we would actually have to build the planner in house. So it would be at least before we could start mid-July at the earliest. So, so for what you're saying is for next month's meeting, you want some more ideals about plants and stuff because you don't want them for me. Well, if you I can cut them down. Yeah, but I if can't. you if you not necessarily <laughs> maybe what you think would look good together. Uh, what we've picked here, we have six different ones here. I did meet with um, Catherine from Stormwater. And we went over and discussed all of this as far as um, the type of plants that um, held water, the type of sh root uh, that you want for a planter, what would thrive, what wouldn't, what would overtake, what was considered, um, uh, I need a word that- Durable? No, no, well, yes, Arty. durable, but if it was- um, Perennial? Like evasive, what we wouldn't Tomato. want to put- <laughs> what we wouldn't want to put that would be evasive, an evasive species that would take over. Right. So we did have a pretty lengthy discussion about all this. Um, so that's kind of where we came up with what we have here now. Um, and like it does say that we would build the planner at the front of the wall. So, you know, it would take a little bit of time to do that. But just some thoughts I can brainstorm on it and bring that back to I think it's a great idea to make that wall look you know, not, I mean, not, special, a, not, special. not overkill, but yeah. I think the, as much the, as we'd love something big and yeah, you know, and, and beautiful, the, it's not, it's not doable for what we want here. We don't want it overpowering. Um, and that's so where the planner and those, you know, smaller bushes came into play. I, I don't have a green thumb, so I'm not going to be able to offer any suggestions. I'm <laughs> all into that right now is when I wish Aaron Simmons was back here. If you remember him, he was a horticulture person. You're still you're still stuck on uh, the zombie walk. Yeah, I love, I, I love <laughs> their proposals. Though. Any more them. questions? Um, just a concern about that. Um, when we originally worked on the Veterans Wall project, I just want to um, see if you're still going to take in consideration, because this is something we discussed in the beginning, about future growth uh, as the wall fills up. Will you still be able to expand? Yeah, we will be future? able to expand if you can see uh, probably your, your next to your last picture. If you're looking at the front of the back of the wall or the front of the wall, mm -hmm. whichever way you're looking with the tiles that are on it, with the engraved names, mm -hmm. we would plan to come off of each side, left and right, there. so not straight, kind of angled out. Okay. And that would almost be if uh, the need calls for like a neat <laughs> wall, maybe something waist high. It wouldn't be as big as this, but then it wouldn't be tiny either it'd be mm -hmm. kind of in between so you would keep that steady flow okay. at this point we would like to fill this wall mm -hmm. up how um, many do we have left to fill on that one wall? i don't know how many have been sold i think the the last count i had there were 700 something tiles available total and i want to say if we've got half of them sold i don't even think we've got half of them sold mm -hmm. we can get you a more accurate count at our next meeting or if you guys want to reach out through email, we can give you a more accurate count because we'd have to go back and update that because I know some tiles have been added. I, 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 we Kathy a has a okay. that has, it's a picture of a wall on its cell and it's got each name in the spot awesome. instead of the blank spots. So yep. this good. would be something that would be good to um, kind of really blow out there online, kind of advertise it because $25 is very inexpensive for what they get. And, um, 
with Father's Day coming up, it's coming up soon, right? Yes. That's well, something that could be pushed. That would be a nice gift for somebody. What we'd like to do is get orders of 10. You know, anything less than 10, right. we have to pay the shipping on. Anything 10 or above, they, it's free shipping. Yeah. So if you were, say if you were to order a brick and yours was the only one that came in, you don't want to wait two months for it. So we have no option right. but to go ahead and order your brick. $15 and I don't remember if I did this or not, but I, I meant to thank Kathy because there was some people that contacted me. I, I thought, well, okay. So there was like three or four bricks that were either broke or misspelled or something. And I think Kathy got on that and got them in and got them fixed. And I contacted the people and they actually went down and looked at it. And Derek actually ordered those. Those were ordered before I came. So Derek. Is, okay. Yeah. Well, Derek took care of all of the original brick replacements. All right, now on to the important stuff. Farmer's market. <laughs> um, well, we did have a beautification day um, last week uh, on the 14th. It went, um, it went really well. We had participation from our seniors there. We planted flowers in the ballards. The ballards were painted. Um, they were also stenciled and all of this was done by our senior center. So uh, just another small thing that we could do for the beautification of the area because we are moving it to the senior center complex on the right hand side where their walking trail is. It's gonna give us a lot more parking <coughs> options, a lot more visibility. And um, so we wanted that area to also get the facelift it deserved um, for the recognition that, you know, we are gonna have our farmer's market there and we hope it's to be bigger and better and just all around really good. So it went so well that we are scheduling another day to do uh, more beautification on those ballards. And so if anyone would like to come out, we will keep you updated about that date. What kind of paint are you using on these planters? They, uh, there's a, it's from Duramax, it's a concrete base. Now, the, just so you know, these are not planters. No. That's what she's calling them. They're, we called them ballards. These They're manholes. Are, yeah, these are concrete. Concrete manholes. Yeah, but these are from like planners, probably so Kathy's chair yeah. to the end of David's, to the end of the table wide. Um, they are concrete blocks that are meant to keep people off the area or things like that. Um, not necessarily an eyesore, more of just uh, something oh, they look that great. needed that yeah, needed to be updated nice. they really look nice thank you yeah so if you guys haven't been by there just stop by check them out you know they the seniors did most of the artwork on there so it's pretty fun mm -hmm. and i told this story at the senior meeting i'll tell it here uh after school was out that day oh. <laughs> there was a couple little boys out there riding their bicycles around and uh, they're out there every day so melissa from the center and felicia go over there and corner them and tell them that there's cameras <laughs> watching over them and things like that. And I thought that was funny. But then to take it a step farther, they were coming in. They came in. They brought them into the senior center and gave them chocolate milk and ice cream sandwich bars <laughs> and made them kind of the sergeant of arms over that so nobody will mess so with when, them. Yeah, so instead of, you know, And I noticed it today that they still have not been messed with, so... So just making the kids that are yeah, part of our community good. feel that they are important because they are. And instead of, you know, not just making people involved and accountable, hey, this is this is in your backyard and we want to make sure that you take care of it as well as everyone else. So make sure you tell us if anyone's messing with it, okay? And they were all excited about it. So mm. hopefully it makes a difference. All right. So we'll go on to survey for parks and rec grant. That would be Kathy Tyson. To apply for the local parks and recreation fund grant that I talked about last time, you have to start by surveying the public that you serve. So if you wanna take one and pass it around, I've been working on this with help from Deborah. I only have two on that side, I'm sorry. Um, I've been working with Deborah. I'm sorry, my ear fell off here. I hear it. You hear it? Um, trying to make sure we and capture all of the programs, maybe all the ideas y'all have the ability, and I'm, I probably uh, put one subject on here that may not be popular under item three, but I put it up there anyway because I think that 
the public has a right to speak up on what they want to see with programs and evaluate programs. I tried to think of every facility, park, everything that we have and include it on the item one. I use or visit and then check all that apply. Everything, everything from the log cabin up Bicentennial Park to Brookside Park and Walking Trail, which people don't always remember that's over there. We got that Greenway grant and built the Greenway. And then I, I took this stuff. Well, after that, which people would use or visit is a section that you participate in the following programs, either as a spectator, participant, or volunteer, because you got a lot of volunteers here in Laverne. Is this something that has to be done by each uh Citizen? No, 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 no. You okay. just have to have a percentage of citizens surveyed. So what I would say is take a look at this. I can send the Word file to Montique for editing, you know, if, if that needs to be, and then just start sending it out after every event, every event that you all do, put it at the city tent, um, put it online. You can do an online survey, but you have to survey the citizens that we serve. You have to get their input for this. Oh. And what this does is it helps determine if you do apply for the local parks and recreation fund grant, what do the citizens want? What do they want? Right. Um, you have to have community input. Have to and have this a is community part of the community input. input to work up towards obtaining those higher grants for parks and recreation. I put popular things on here that I've seen people talk about. I put things that maybe get bashed online, but maybe there are people in the community who do want them. Um, uh, for example, this I thought was great. I didn't even think about it, but Deborah suggested today the sun structure for the playground. I was like, what are you talking about? What that was is a big shade to put over the play equipment. They have those out there. You can get the grant to pay for that. Wonderful idea. I did put, what do you like most about our parks? What do you like least about our parks? Because if you don't know what bothers people, how are you going to improve? And then I think that, the, and I should have put a number six, how safe do you feel when visiting the park or any of the parks or facilities? I think that's really important too because that might, that might trigger some responses from our police or board of mayor and aldermen. Hey, maybe we need to increase patrols here or have more volunteers at this event. Or so you all do this in your city? We had to do it, yeah. You had to do it? We had to do it. We went door to door and got answers. But we've only got 650 people who live there. So and I understand not that. than 40,000. If we, as you said, is this something that's difficult to, to do online and get back results? You have to offer it in different modes. <laughs> you have to offer it. Uh, not everybody has a computer. So uh, right. in different forms, you have to show that you've offered it in more than one way. And it's just a term of getting some of the grant funding they ask. They want to know about community input, um, how you're gonna use those dollars and what the community has to say about that or their input or what they would like to see. Is this something that the city's ever done before, David? No, I don't believe no, so. I'm aware of nothing. Yeah. Which is, it really should have been happening every, every few years. Mm -hmm. The other option you have for this is, I've tried to make it two pages, you could do it two-sided, put it in with the water bill. And you would be oh. so surprised. Yeah. I bet you would get five thousand back. Uh -huh. Yes, it will that's be. A good idea. It would be challenging to compile, but again, that's Montique's job uh -huh. as a grant writer. She would be able right. to compile that. Uh -huh. um, it's it's just it gives you feedback. It it provides. So from start what do the to citizens want. What do the people you serve want? What do the people we serve want? What do the people parks and recreation staff want? So from start to finish, is, is any kind of time frame or do you You just would probably need to, you have to have this in place before you start the application process. You're going to have a lot of other things. I think I gave you a copy of the yeah. checklist. You got to do a lot of other things. In I conjunction. tried to read up on all that, man. That's, that, it's, it's, but you ooh, know what? Again, big as my head is, it wouldn't fit. 650 people with really seven staff. We were able to get one. I know. I know Laverne can do it. You have a lot of very talented people here. But I also brought along the same lines, and this is the same application. Um, you also have to have a master plan or a parks and recreation plan in place. And what I did, fortunately, they did have a written plan from probably 10 or 15 years ago in War Trace. I updated it, 
our Parks and Rec committee hadn't met for probably a year when I started there. So we kind of started over and we developed a mission statement and goals. When we did that for the Parks and Recreation um, Committee, we then had to have it approved by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Everything you do here has to go through the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. You, you have to have that level of oversight and accountability, right. um, which I think is very important. But you have to, along with the plan, you have to show what are your current programs that you offer. And the current programs, you have to follow the goals set forth by, I want to say it's something 2020, like Parks and Rec Plan 2020 that the state has, like build a healthier community, create a positive childhood experience. You, and we incorporated those from our mission, and it shows how each of these programs touch on that mission. And I, I don't want to belabor it, um, but we also developed, these are the additional programs we'd like to see in place. Where did we get those? From the survey right here. This is what people wanted. That's what people brought back from the survey, That's so it made back. it easier. Family for camping, senior stroll, yoga classes, that type of stuff. That's where we built what, do we, what else do we want to develop. And then you have um, the next couple of pages, four and five, completed work. This is some of the work that we've done. You know, again, it's a very small town, so it's pretty tough, you know, to, to have a whole lot. And I know y'all are going to have a ton, ton of stuff. Um, but you can see we have our share of challenges also. Inventory of existing facilities. Just You have to have that also for that grant. Just an inventory. What do we have in the gym? We have restrooms, concession stand, locker room, storage, and a gym. Jernigan Field, we have a stage, restrooms, bleachers, and a concession stand. So every facility you have or every park, you kind of need to go through there. When at Ayers Park, we had two pavilions, a hiking trail, playground, softball field, skate park, volleyball court, and we hope to have a dog park there maybe by the end of the summer. We don't know. And then um, you have short-term goals that we want to see happen and a wish list, um, handicap, handicap playground equipment, and maybe I'm not being politically correct saying handicap, but that's, that's what we had, camping sites for people to go camping. I think um, all those are... are so you just, you just develop this document as part of that application process, and there's a whole lot more. You've got to come up with topographical maps, and you've got to show, um, oh, not the, where you own the property. Debbie, help me out. The, the deeds to the properties of these parks. You can go down to the courthouse and get all that to show that, yes, indeed, the town does own the property that you want ultimately to apply for improvement. There's a lot to it. Y'all had the list, but I wanted to give you a jumping off point and ideas. And again, this list, I can send Montique. I think the main thing is, is uh, if what you're saying is is uh, correct, that getting this out and getting it back and, and before you can even ask for a grant, I guess. Yeah, you have to have, I would say if this is May now, <clears throat> Try to get it out in June and July and have it returned by the end of August. What kind of grants do they usually get for? I parking? had that list that I had given you last time. They had up to five hundred thousand. No, I was I was asking David oh, and Felicia. What kind of grants do they usually get for parking wrecks? I, since I've been here, no. there has been no grant. There Christy has Houston the fifty thousand from Christy Houston yes, Foundation that I told Montique about yeah. is the only thing, and I've been talking about grants. For all the years, how long has that been? This committee, it's been a long time. And there's now. one that um, the state offers every two up. years. That maybe that's the one, one I'm talking, talking about. about. Yes. Right, I talked it's about that. It's coming up beginning. available now, and you know, years ago, that's what we kind of had earmarked for when the splash pad was proposed. Mm -hmm. um, Are these uh, things just? I mean, being realistic, there are 50-50 grants, Steve, which means they'll pay for half the project. The city has to right. pay for half. So you have to make sure. And I think we talked about this. If the city is going to do something anyway, and we talked about replacing the playground mm -hmm. um, equipment and the pad for the kids, if you have to do it anyway, let the money that people paid in real estate transfer taxes pay for half of it. Like again, right now, if Laverne has never even applied for the grant, we didn't sell that many houses in War Trace. We got your money. Mm -hmm. We got your money. Thank you. We appreciate it. But there's no reason you've got a full-time no, grant if, grader. No, if you've everything that you're saying is, is spot on, then I don't understand why we've 
except for that one time the city's never went through this process and got money because and, and there's more money besides the state money that's available i have researched grants over and over and over again and uh but you've got to have the planning in place um you've got to have the collaboration of all the different individuals working together um it's it's not easy but let me tell you i do know for a fact like the town of smyrna some of the projects they've worked on because i've talked to them is they're using the numbers of north rutherford which is laverne to get grant funding the smyrna outdoor adventure center is one example we're not getting that money we're not getting that funding and they're getting benefit are we, of us are not, we not i mean you know i'm pretty straightforward are we not smart enough to be doing this or are we not, not work, applying for it we're no, not working hard the enough on the table every right. Year. right i, I think oh, steve oh. to be honest part of the concern has been when you have to have a matching part but i think that the city is now financially stable enough where they could look at that and again you also have to go back when you develop a long-term plan a long-term parks and recreation plan like this you plan for adding to the walking trail you plan for adding a dog park or a bike trail or exercise routines around a walking trail or you know just whatever you plan on all of this you have to have a long-term plan what's your thoughts on all this felicia um i think that just talking about grants isn't really helpful but bringing something like what you showed us here today is phenomenal because just because we know the money's out there, there's no way for us to know how to get it. So what you've presented to us here will help us start on whatever it is that we need to. So getting out in the community and doing these surveys and finding it, I think that's great. And I'm well, excited and I, about I wanna it. I want to say that I think that having a more open dialogue with Montique and actively going up to her and mm -hmm. saying, what do you have here? Montique is a really, really great resource for yes. the city. Mm -hmm. I don't want to blow sunshine up anyone's skirt right now, but she's a great No, but that day that, that day that we and met with her, you and I and uh, Deborah, she not only is she got, she knows that stuff, but at the same time, she was in awe of some of the things that you all were mentioned. So I think that she learned from some of those things. So, Well, that's why we're here, Steve. What do you think about all this, David? I think it'd be foolish on our part not to apply for everything that we can get our hands on. Um, I think as, as a board and as a park and rec department, I think it's our job to provide a better quality of life for our citizens. Mm -hmm. And I think just because our neighbors may have something, that doesn't mean that we can't have that also, because it's gonna get to the point Yeah, and I don't like the idea of you saying they're using that. their money. Yeah. Um, you know, okay. years ago, the splash pad got to be such a dirty word that everybody was scared to mention it. Well, my thoughts are, if you've got one and you've got this big of a community, it's going to get utilized. Oh, I would it love It may it. not be popular on the front side, but let's try to get the ball rolling on something in that area and then let the board <coughs> Yeah, decide. if we got money coming in to help. I think initially on the splash pad idea was a great idea, but at the time we were also being told there is no money. Yeah. We were also being told by Parks and Rec they have not, they don't have enough employees to take care of what's going on now in addition to a splash pad even though it's seasonal. So the lack of employees to maintain and take care of what we have and a splash pad on top of it and plus we were being told there is no money in the city. You can't do this, there's no money. So we were wondering why would they be wanting to spend that kind of money on something if they don't have the money or the employees? But this is where we're lacking and we're falling behind. I, and I have talked about this and uh, probably not with you, Felicia, and you, Kathy, sitting here. David might have heard some of the things I've talked about. I have researched other park and recreation departments. They are allocating funds from user fees, a certain percentage going back into future development and growth of the parks and recreation programs. I have lived here and seen the population go from 8,000 to what, 38,000, where we Isn't have- Isn't allocating funds coming in. from finance? I mean, we no. don't decide that, right? For future growth and development, different municipalities have user fees, park fees, uh, different fees, they're t allocating a certain percentage of that and putting it in a fund for the matching funds for grants, things like that. Um, land acquisition purchases, things like that. Uh, and it doesn't have to be 
it doesn't have to be the designated splash pad only. Right, you know, it's there's open. A, there's a whole array yes. of things yeah. that this can be Whatever. used for. Smarter's yeah. building Absolutely. a ballpark with theirs out off Hammerville Road. That was part of a grant. They probably, this same grant we're talking about, I believe they got it in maybe 2016, they were awarded some money. Right, right. So, and then, you know, everybody around us is getting a part of this except for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, right now, right now is when we have to start. You got to look through that list. And if, we, if you need to set up a subcommittee or something like that it, for Parks and Rec committee members to work with Parks and Rec staff and with Montique and, and you, Steve, do it right now. Do it right now. It's vital right now. Get started because next, I want to say it's a year from now is when the application deadline is. You got plenty of time right now if you get started on it, and it's going to take a full year to get it all in place. You're going to have to have public user meetings. Fees, user fees. Uh, I remember when I lived in Smyrna, they actually charged you to go to their uh, town center. They had a mm -hmm. workout area. Mm -hmm. They actually charged you either by the day or by the mm -hmm. month or mm -hmm. quarterly or yearly. Do they also and, like designate the pool. part of building permits toward Parks and Rec because it is? when you're growing the city mm -hmm. you also need to grow your quality of life impact fees impact fees impact to fees. go toward yeah. parks and rec. they do have a a, yeah. a portion of the impact fees designated to parks and rec i used to know what that That's was right. i had a so chart the on the time yeah the impact mm -hmm. fees are uh road parks and Just police like well let's move on we're getting uh way up behind here uh, they got another meeting coming in and this last one here, they want, uh, Kathy wanted me to, or Deborah wanted to get an ordinance to review the role and duties of the Park and Rec Committee. We had asked for this uh, several months ago when uh, AC was supposed to get it. I see that it has made it here. I've read a little bit about this in the uh, charters and ordinances and stuff. Um, apparently I was supposed to have, uh, or we were supposed to, select a uh, vice chairman um they did give us a copy of the what two or three paragraphs we have a half a page on the parks and rec advisory committee All right um it's in this packet that they gave us for the meeting tonight um working with deborah a little bit she provided me with like murfreesboro and smyrna um parks and rec committee or board or whatever what their duties are and I would propose, even if we don't do it tonight, although if there's any way we could, I would like for the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee to read over this proposal and possibly forward it to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen to make a favorable recommendation for the Board of Mayor and Aldermen to pass this. And basically, um, if you will see it, and I'm just gonna read the first, cup, first couple of whereases. The Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee of Laverne has served the city for nearly 50 years. I don't know if that's right, but I know they were incorporated in 72, and that was part of their original charter. When the city was incorporated by the state of Tennessee legislature, whereas the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee has served only in an advisory capacity throughout these years, but has expertise to allow a more significant role in the decisions that would move in a positive and long-term direction, the property and programs on behalf of the quality of life for residents and visitors, and whereas other surrounding communities in Middle Tennessee have more clearly defined the role and duties of their own parks and recreation committees. What I would propose in this ordinance is to change the name of our committee, advisory committee, to the Par Laverne Parks and Recreation Board and take off the advisory committee. Um, the selection of the board members would still be the, the same. Basically, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen would pick those. You have the voting membership, membership of six citizens who re six citizens who reside within town limits and then one member of the board of mayor and aldermen non-voting member would be the director of the parks department um, the chairman would be uh, whoever the board of mayor and aldermen selects as chairman which is what you all do now but again go ahead and appoint by this board this committee or an advisory committee <clears throat> if this passes where we could select among our own here a vice chairman um, when the meetings are all meetings are open to the public some of these other cities even had a citizens forum for the parks and rec committee i don't think that we've approached that point yet you know i'm, I'm really glad to see alderman brown here in the audience but she's it 
right now. Well, she's got a meeting. Right. Um, so anyway, you can go on and read all this. Some of it y'all may like, some of it you may not like, but the accountability comes here and it ultimately goes back to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen with this ordinance proposal. They would have final say in everything. I did add to this, given the brouhaha several years ago, that the Parks and Recreation Board may also solicit or receive any gifts or bequests of money or other personal property or any donation to be applied principal or income for temporary or permanent use for playgrounds or other recreational purposes, but members, the people on this board would immediately inform the appropriate city staff about these funds and any funds solicited or received shall be turned over to the pro oh, property, I need to change that to proper, city officials within 24 hours, but no later than 48 hours, so that these funds may be deposited within three business days in accordance to state law. You have to have that in there if, if we're allowed to go out and fundraise for our parks department. Um, the other item here is, and, and this is really important, we cannot, notwithstanding anything that may be herein contained or implied to the contrary, the Parks and Recreation Board shall not be empowered to incur any liability on behalf of the city or to expand or incur liability for any sum of money except as may pre be provided for in the yearly budgets and appropriations adopted by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen and directed by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. We, we, can't, we can't spend city money is what that means unless the Board of Mayor and Aldermen specifically say, um, I don't know, Bob, can you go out and buy a couple of bags of ice for this event coming up? We're not to do that unless we are directly instructed to. So we can get donations. We have to inform the appropriate city officials and we have to have that money turned in if we get it within 24 hours to meet state laws. That's kind of yeah. like what we do with the The only, the only iffy part on that that I would see is I would say if we did go out and raise money that I would prefer really if we had a city staff person with us so that no one would be accused of, oh, well, you said you were raising it. Where's the money? You know, you want to be careful Trust with that. Trust me, I understand or do that. It where you're not dealing with cash, you're dealing with right. uh, something that online right. that where it can be. Or hey, I've got I've got a pledge to. from I've got a pledge from whoever. I've got a pledge from Bridgestone, David. They're going to give us twenty five thousand dollars toward whatever you want it to go toward. I'm going to go pick up that check now, or you guys going to go pick up that check now, or hey, let's come to town city hall and make a big check presentation take some pictures or whatever you know I, I can see something like that for us being able to call people and get donations and sponsorships I'm really kind of hands-off on actually touching any money but if they did say well take it right now mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about turn it in immediately to the I would city not staff want to take cash because well, somebody could come back and say I would want to have a receipt to show it if I did by all parties. It yeah. sounds by the time we have our next meeting, we all have a lot of really, really good homework. information. Yeah, homework. What about the catfish? A lot of good information and a lot of, uh, uh, well, that's first. I will tell you all this and people at home that may be watching on, uh, and, and I'll tell you about that. I'll make the last comment. So let's, let's finish that off. And we'll start with Mr. Eric. You got any comments, sir? Uh, no comment other than uh, I did provide an email, the league update of what's going on. Um, I've been fielding a lot of complaints and concerns uh, through the experience right now. So I won't belabor the meeting if anything. We can take it offline. But I just wanted to share in a public forum, there is frustration um, with the league experience thus far for the eight and under in the T-ball side. Miss Skinner? Well, it seems like we're going to have a lot of homework to do, thanks to Deborah and Kathy uh, providing all this information. That, uh, but one thing, though, I mean, I'm just looking at this. One thing that I would like to, to see done is this: when the log cabin was brought up here, it was supposed to have been refurbished, <laughs> for want of a better word. Nothing has been done to it. It's been set there. It's been vandalized. Can I tell you why? Because I looked into that and having it named uh, uh, on the Register of Historic Places. Once it's on that Register of Historic Places, 
you can start getting grant funding and stuff like that to do it. To do that though, it has to be built, you have to have it affiliated with property and it's only a temporary building so it's not a permanent structure. So it's not on our um, deeds anywhere. Okay. And that's, okay. that's what stymies us with that. I wondered. <laughs> I'm Thank sorry, you. I'm sorry. Ms. Debra? Okay, um, you did ask how long I've been on the Parks and Rec Board. I did look it up, and it's been since 2013, so uh, I guess I could I asked you it. that? Yes, you did earlier. <laughs> we were talking about, you, yeah, I said I'd been <laughs> on it for a long time, and I couldn't give you a direct answer when you said how long, so I just looked it up, so that's how okay. long I've been on it. Um, I just uh, want, want to make one suggestion or see if this would be possible for future meetings. Is there any way that... We can get a copy, and I'm so sorry, a copy of the agenda prior to the meeting so that um, we can be a little bit more prepared for ideas and things like that. And maybe we, it would help us get through the meetings a little bit. That was kind of my fault with the agenda because I added to it, and uh, matter of fact, I added a couple other things that you all recommended. So uh, I guess if we had a cutoff date or cutoff time, say 12 o'clock on that day, Kathy could provide us with, with it, but if there's something else that comes up after that, then it'd just have to go away until the next month or so. Okay. Well, I don't think a cutoff, a cutoff date would be a bad idea. Okay. But, so just, just, a, just a thought that might help us get our ideas and things like that, because I know that we all get enthusiastic about our ideas once we get to talking about all these good ideas. She's been pretty good. I have to give her prompts. She's better than her husband. Uh, <laughs> Kathy Tyson. I've taken up enough of your time, so I'll pass. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Bob. I'd like to go back to the powder puff. Uh, the ladies talking about. <laughs> He's scared to death to say women. Would it be better if we done it later on in the year where it was cooler? I would be way more interested in recruiting my daughters to participate when it's later on in the year. Okay, I make a motion that way. Well, the thing, and me and Felicia talked about it, and the thing about, man, her calendar is full. I guess, I mean, if, if you could think about it, and if you want to try to go on up some, I'm, I'm good with that, too. We'll take a look. And yeah, I because what's going to happen is you're going to get into everything that's already planned, and then we're going to plan it for this date, and then, oh, it's too cold then, so it's never... You know, That's true. You know, it's never a happy medium. You just sometimes you just have to plant like old timers festival. You know, we don't know if it's going to rain or if it's going to be miserable or right. just have to kind of go with it. And who knows that day that we have it, it may be overcasty and seventy five degrees. Just you know, just a thought for them. No, I understand. Miss oh. Deborah, me well, up in a dress. I just want to thank everybody so. who finally put on paper the zombie walk which i hope one day will grow into a festival that will be known all over tennessee and people from everywhere will come thank you. and uh, i think that this board has since we've got steve up here we have accomplished a lot and we're starting to get everything moving forward for the city and the community and i'm proud to be part of the board and I'm, i like what our members are bringing to the table and powder puff will be okay if you have it in age categories because <laughs> when we get over 60 our bones next thing you know everybody will want it in weight category well that wouldn't be bad i will go for that i want to be in the over we'll 60 just category all blondes and under 125 <laughs> and and who what that, about that's the category i want to be into <laughs> i don't think it'll work <laughs> Catfish. What? What? Okay, I'm gonna. Pay? The catfish for senior citizens is coming up June the 11th from uh, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tickets are seven dollars each. Uh, you get catfish, slush, hush puppies, mm -hmm. coleslaw, mm -hmm. dessert, and a drink. Uh, I think also if you want to buy a little bit, Melissa's making some of her famous banana world famous. Well, un, you know, nanner, nanner, nanner pudding. Uh, I would like to ask you all, uh, with your friends and families, on June the 1st, which is a Saturday from 8 a.m. until 
10 a.m. at Bojangles up here, I'm going to have all these senior citizens board members, along with uh, Melissa and Linda and some of the seniors, we're just going to have a, like a little meet and greet gathering. People can come out and meet the board members and who they've been hearing us talk about, and we'll be selling tickets there. Or you can just come by and say hello. I mean, you know, it's it's not a political thing. It's not a like we were doing last year. It's just, you know, try to come by Bojangles. I want to sell some tickets. We're going to have a big uh, brouhaha. Now, getting back to tonight's meeting, I'm really excited about this zombie thing i'm glad you ladies brought it up because i know that mr bob myself and mr eric ain't got a clue, <laughs> we'll get you a clue. and i feel comfortable in saying that and i'm also excited about some of this other stuff that uh, kathy tyson and deborah has bought brought to life it almost seems to me and i don't know the right words but it almost seems to me that somebody is either dropping the ball, being lazy or something, and not going after this stuff, if it has indeed been available all this time. You know, if it was only available last month, I can understand, but if it's been available all this time and we haven't been taking advantage of it to make the job easier for people like David and Felicia in parks and stuff to uh, aim, keep money in the city. But with that being said, I'm glad that we had a full all quorum. All different administrations mm -hmm. yeah. tried they never do. They never. They fail. I don't know why. I work every day, so I'm not involved in some of these things. But it's been presented to the board, but nothing ever gets done. Well, it's we're gonna. We've always been told there's not enough money right now uh -huh. to do this. Is is the reason, and the, there are not enough employees to take care of it. Is the reason. But I think what we're doing now is at least getting we it started. Is what we have we to do. We can't keep using that as a crutch. Me and uh, Felicia talked about that today. I, that's that dog ain't gonna hunt no more. We're either gonna have to work harder, uh, smarter, smarter, yes. Uh, but we can't keep using that as a crutch if we're going to see any kind of moving forward in the city. Yeah, wise man told me we had to hustle. Is that right? <laughs> That's the only thing I ever requested um, of my children. Is one thing you can do in life. You can't. You don't have to be the biggest, the baddest, the best, the fastest. But one thing you can always do: you can hustle. Yeah. I just wanted to follow up really quickly um, with the. Um, I don't know if chain of command would be the right word. Um, there were some issues that were addressed. Um, Eric, that you brought that up, but I wanted to make sure that you knew that um, I've already been contacted. I am the athletic coordinator, so if you have, or if anyone has issues, once it goes up that chain, the correct chain of command being to the league and then to myself, those issues can be addressed. Um, over the last couple of weeks, we have brought in five additional players to create a tenue team. We have um, welcomed a Navy sailor onto the field, which was a beautiful, just a beautiful re, uh, reunion for a little girl out there, um, as well as we've already discussed fall ball sign up. So being that it's new, um, I appreciate the support from Steve and from all the board members out there. We really appreciate it. and We want it to be the best it absolutely can be. So I know there's issues, so thank you for sticking with us. And if you have anything else, just let me know and I'll make sure to take care of it, okay? Cool. Uh, the one great thing is if we can communicate that chain of command to parents so they can voice their concerns. Yeah. Um, that would definitely be great. That's a start. And then any course of action as far as resolution for that, because all they've heard is that their concerns have been heard, but there hasn't been any direct lines of communication as far as how they're being mm -hmm. addressed. And that's already been addressed. So, so, so we'll get together with that and let you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. As a parent, we're missing that piece. My new word of the day started out first thing this morning <coughs> and ended right here, communication. I call this meeting adjourned.